Welcome to the six turns. After getting the information from the last research station, all arrows point to going off world. The crew excited for their next chapter are finalizing their affairs on this planet. Be ready to take off to the next one. Jetta, in particular, had a very difficult time leaving this planet. Being born here and embracing the beauty of it, she really struggled getting mentally ready to leave. Captain Harlan puts the coordinates in the nap computer to leave Planet Pain and go to the planet Gun Bay in the, the past system. We are still in the Scaron sector. We are just leaving one system to another. The coordinates are in and the trip's about to begin. This particular flight would take five credits in fuel. They've already amassed three credits worth of fuel on board of the ship. Paying another two to complete the trip was required. Sensors has picked up an enemy ship. Pirate raiders wanted to board the vessel. Captain Harlan thought of the best way to intimidate their soon-to-be boarders to find a way to get out of this situation. Thetra comes in and suggests with the aid of the AI they may find the proper message to send to the pirate raiders. With the aid of the AI companion they crafted the message that the crew were sick and infected that any raiders or boarders would be unwelcome and will also be infected. With that the pirate raiders left the system leaving the ship intact. The crew of the Argus finally make it to planet Gun Bay. Gun Bay is a, a bit smaller of a planet than Pain, but more dense, carrying about 300 million in population, with a temperate climate. Upon docking their vessel, there was no licenses required. The crew set up a new hiding outpost on planet. They reviewed the data records and quickly found out that the abandoned from the research station had followed them on planet. So has one of the Merc contracts, leaving two rivals. The crew pays for the upkeep for this turn, costing them two credits, as well as the interest on their vessel, another two credits, effectively going from 14 to 10. The remaining 10 was paid off on the balance of the ship. This leaves them with no credits available. Captain Harlan, wanting to be ready and on his best game, trains for this portion before the mission starts, earning one experience point. Often struggling on missions, takes the time to train so that she can be better for the next time she's required to go on the mission. As this quest mission is of most importance, we do not want to be bogged down by any of our rivals. So both Ruby and Brex perform decoys to ensure that no one will bother us. It's to explore the planet. She runs into the local law enforcement. They are informed of our situation and why we are there. If we happen to be able to retrieve data of the missing people in the local planet, they will compensate us with two credits. Dero attempted to secure a trade, found some crime syndicate that was able to provide us with contraband for some profit. Not wanting to get in any more trouble, we turned that deal down. Tetra stayed on the ship. In the workshop, she attempted to repair the machine pistol in a resounding success. After reviewing the data sticks from the previous missions, we were able to piece together that all signs pointed to the research base Nardo 8. After a scan of the registries, it was clear that the Unity is trying to encrypt this base so that the public eye cannot see it. In order for us to be able to determine what is on this base, we'll have to infiltrate and again access the data from the computers and retrieve all information pertaining to what experiments are being overseen on this space station. 
Scans show that the objective can be gathered from this point here. This point is where we could get a list of all missing personnel. And this point is where we can find some shiny bits, earning us two more credits. The crew has now landed on the research platform and is ready to begin the mission. The crew disembarks and gets ready to start the mission. On this mission, it's going to be Harlan, Ruby, Darrow, Tetra, Yakar, and Brex. The crew gets into position and the mission begins. Round 1. Yakar hacks the security door, successfully opens it. Then Captain Harlan moves in. There's nobody in the room. The remainder of the party then all move in. In round two, the entire crew dash forward in front of the door. In round three, Captain Harlan opens the door. This reveals a Sandrunner. Darrow does not waste any time and guns down the Sandrunner. Once all is clear, the remaining of the crew dash into the room. Ruby takes this time to grab the shiny bits. Round four. Tetra moves in and hacks the door. With a success, the security door opens, revealing two Sandrunners. Ruby then moves into position to assist. She guns down the first one. The other Sandrunner moves into melee attack. Tetra fights the Sandrunner and defeats him in hand-to-hand -hand combat. After the combat is concluded, the remainder of the crew joins the party. In round 5, Captain Harlan moves towards the door and opens it. This reveals four Sandrunners. And with their surprise, the other door opens with two Sandrunners waiting for them. They seem to be in an ambush. Yakar quickly assists Captain Harlan, pulls out his shotgun, takes a blast, hitting two of the Sandrunners, stunning them both. Sandrunners rush both Harlan and Yakar. First, Harlan tried to deal with two Sandrunners at the same time. He won the first combat, but the second one got him. He uses luck point to jump out of the way. Yakar is unlucky as well, gets mauled by two Sandrunners and goes down. On the other side of the room, the two Sandrunners rush Brex. Brex gets taken down, like his feral friend. <coughs> After witnessing Brex's fall, Darrow, Ruby, and Tetra unload. After a brutal round of losing two crew members, we are now in round six. Captain Harlan takes action and fires and takes down one of the Sandrunners. The other two quickly respond by charging Captain Harlan. The captain did his best, but his luck runs short this time. <coughs> Sandrunner across the room leaps into action with the remaining crew. They f try to fight him off, but Ruby goes down. As the only remaining two crew members, they fire frantically at the Sandrunner. Only Tetra scoring a hit this time. Round 7. The crew is on the ropes. Darrow moves to get a better vantage point. Tetra fires and stuns. Darrow fires again, killing another runner. This leaves one runner left. The runner rushes Darrow. They get in melee combat, but unfortunately Darrow loses this fight. <coughs> Round 8. Tetra quickly snap fires her rifle and downs the last sand runner.
After clearing all the Sandrunners, Petra was able to walk over and use a console and retrieve the list of missing people. The local authorities will pay two credits for this list. She now moved on down the hallway to the last room in the research base. With a quick prayer, she opens the door. Nothing behind the door. With a sigh of relief, she walks in the room, access to the control panel, and gets all of the data that was required. This is another successful mission for the crew. After reviewing the data from the research base, it became clear that the Unity was behind the Orphanage Enhancement Program. This program preyed on orphans and attempted to make them into super soldiers. The failed experiment caused the Sand Runners. By luck, the director of the experiments and the project is actually here on planet. It's time for the final showdown. Time to eliminate them once and for all. This mission earned us six credits. With the shiny bits and as well as the list that was provided for two credits each, we now have a total of 10 credits available. Looting the battle site was not very fruitful. We were able to find a damage communicator and a laser site. Now let's head to sickbay to check on our crew. Captain Harlan was knocked out. He woke up in sickbay. Ruby, unfortunately, was not able to be revived. She dies. Darrow suffered minor injuries. He'll be in sickbay until our next turn. Rex was very lucky. He actually gained some experience by being knocked out. And Yakar, unfortunately, another casualty, joined the list of our dead. The crew takes a moment of silence to remember their fallen comrades before launching their coffins into the dead cold of space. Now that we're back on the Argus, let's review the experience. Tetra has the most because she actually survived the combat. Darrow and Brex get an extra plus one XP, and all the other ones just get one. The crew spends the night out drinking in honor of the fallen comrade. This brings them closer together. Jetta is very thankful that she did not participate in the mission. She thinks that someone else is watching over her. She gains a luck point. This concludes the sixth turn. The crew of the Argus suffered a mighty blow, losing two of their own. Although they did learn the identity of the director, the one responsible for all of these experiments, the ones responsible for the death of all their comrades. Now it's time to take revenge. Will the crew be able to take advantage of the opportunity presented to them? Will they be able to eliminate the threat? We'll see on the next campaign turn.